on this uh, important journey that we've started here at this, uh, I think, very appropriate site to remind us that in 1994, some 19,7 million South Africans stood in long lines waiting to cast their votes. I want to remind us that they were voting under a set of rules from our interim constitution, as the rector reminded us, one that has got close links with the University of Western Cape. In that 1993 constitution, this provided that any party in the National Assembly that achieved 3,5% of the vote was guaranteed a seat in the cabinet. It also incidentally limited the cabinet to 27 people. That's in the interim constitution. And uh, in that interim constitution, it guaranteed any party that got 80 seats, 80 out of 400, that's 20% of the vote, were entitled to an executive deputy president. Now, I don't think for a moment <laughs> that many people of the 19,7 million were familiar with those provisions. It clearly, incidentally, was an, uh, an interim constitution envisaging uh, multi-party government. I think, however, in the, the millions of people who lined up to vote, there were two compelling beliefs. The one was a recognition um, not complete, perhaps, but nevertheless a recognition that South Africa was made up of different people and that the country belonged to all of the people who lived in it, an acceptance in a deep way of diversity. And the second, I think, motivating spirit with that 19,7 million people was that to build a better life for all, the people of South Africa had to work together. That government of national unity set up in 1994 lasted for two years of an intended period of five. And it's interesting to reflect on what we lost in that premature end to that. And so I think what the challenge is for today's conversation and the conversations that are happening later this month and will continue to happen is to return to that core set of values that the country belongs to all who live in it and that every citizen has a duty to work with his or her compatriots to build a good life for all. So that stable coalitions that serve people and extend dignity, prosperity, and freedom to all should be part of that, of recovering the dream of 1994. We now move to the second realm of diversity in our parliament, and I think the South African parliament must be one of the most diverse and interesting in terms of a diversity of political organization, a diversity of leadership, a diversity of vision. And so we move to our second set of presentations, and we start with the United Democratic Front. And I ask their presenter to come to the, the United Democratic Movement. <laughs> that, that, that's an interesting piece of history. Our program directors, former President Motlante, I think Mkulua, you are aware that in this house we are the only two former heads of state. Abaye <laughs> Basafunda. <laughs> Deputy President, our appropriate introductions have been made 
and I align myself with them. This event is a prime example showing that it is possible to bring key role players under one roof to discuss issues of national interest. Thus, it could also be to discuss the UDM's concept of an economic indaba or CODESA and perhaps the head of government, if he was here, I don't know Elokwal Balbalegeni, Befambu Konap, but Gem Shawam Nimkale Elbasa with Kabezele Golfin, Enya Nenya. It could be done anytime soon, as this is the bone of contention, which, as we all know, that at Kodesa we did not deal with the thorny issue, this thorny issue. We dealt with political freedom, thinking that economic freedom would follow. Alas, 29 years later, we are found wanting. As a result, the youth of today is uneasy about their future, and the situation is exacerbated by the exodus of both black, youth, of both black and white youth in particular professionals. Coming back to the topic of the day, South African voters have mandated different parties with their support, especially in the 2016 municipal elections, when it signaled the end of one party dominance. A combination of parties in the opposition benches added their numbers and decided to push the party which ran the major metros in, the, in this country. We, however, saw the hostile reaction to that decision. We must be cautious in our current endeavors not to overregulate our democracy and ensure that robust engagement pre- and post-elections remains at, at the order of the day. I have read some academic submissions and other material in preparation for this dialogue. And one thing that is still an Achilles, uh, Achilles uh, heel to the entire process is public representatives and political parties direct access to government resources. In other words, the hijacking by public representatives and political parties of accounting officers' powers remains a challenging setup. The second corrupt political directives, uh, rather these corrupt political uh, directives are laced in many instances with corruption and must be done away with. And individuals and parties caught with their hands in the cookie jar must be expelled. In order to understand the damage, this dynamic, one needs to but read the Zondo Commission's findings. We'll ever forget Mr. Agrizi's testimony under oath as an illustration of this point. Regarding the seat thresholds, we must be careful to speak of this to not be seen as undermining the spirit of the Constitution that promotes multi-party democracy. Let each party express their opinion on the matter in their manifestos and then the voters will have the last say. As we speak, many parties have registered with the intention to participate in the 2024 elections. How are we going to change midstream? We cannot use that as a yardstick to punish political parties in an untested theory that the current instability of local government is because of the proliferation, proliferation of political parties. It is worrisome 
when this theory comes from the big parties. Although we are thankful to this initiative, the question is whether it has gone far enough. Why not look at the entire electoral system? For instance, something as simple as the appointment of some of the service providers of the IEC remains a state secret. Apart from the first round of appointment of electoral commissioners, in 1994, the appointment of later commissioners has become a sticky issue. Those of us who served in the trenches, together with some of the current commissioners, know where their loyalty or party loyalties lie. In the same vein, many have questioned why members of the ruling party Tripartite Alliance are used as presiding officers. Another failure is that when the IDPs are conducted, certain expectations are created with the people and then no feedback is given. The professionalization and training of officials need attention as well. In conclusion, then Mr. Deputy President, the demarcation boards need to check up its act the willy-nilly chopping and changing of both rural and urban wards must stop. At local government level, we need to value the work of our subheadmen in rural areas, that is body. Whilst councillors live far away from the people, subheadmen tackle the day-to-day -day needs of rural South Africans, and they are asking for a cell phone allowance and a stipend. Any declaration which we come up after this dialogue must be as a result of consensus. It is unfortunate that for some of us who have been doing coalition benchmarking and research in different countries of the world, it came so late. It is a pity that this exercise was not completed earlier. Embarks Utel Nengagi of the local local government. I I in the more item lay Zauteta God. Let me advise you, the Secretary of the ANC, Secretary General. Our city a problem is at local government level currently, which we must focus on. Magasi tinge elka maliti e sendi coalition nez nipa ti ez nike zwe i vote kaku grand coalition yabo maninga seven za neti a left phase until 2024 ni na bantu beni nigwe in numbers ez more kuno kunez nipa I can assure you. You will achieve stability with local government. You will also achieve we improve the race relations. Well, it is. Slowly, it is. So, I don't criticize any seven small parties. If you don't want to fail, you blame your small parties. Seven, that's no two. So, I'm not.